Peace. This is your host, Jamar Clark. Welcome to another episode of the Balance of a Lion podcast, an audio experience that is directly correlated with our blog. If you're new here, this forum serves as a useful gathering space for modern men in society who are enthusiastic about self-mastery and achievements that create physical, emotional, spiritual, and mental stability. You can expect blog posts centered around a plethora of topics such as masculinity, mindfulness, health and wellness, spirituality, finance, and more. The goal is to help create a more well-rounded society that includes individuals who have a higher sense of self-awareness, self-confidence, emotional intelligence, and integrity, creating well-rounded leaders who will stimulate positive changes in their household, in the community, and in business. In this episode, we'll provide a summary of a book called The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Scovel Shin. Florence Scovel Shin first published The Game of Life and How to Play It in 1925. Since then, she's inspired countless people globally, helping them to understand the law of attraction and how to align themselves with infinite abundance by sharing real life stories accompanied by practical wisdom. Shin provides directions on how to cleverly trigger the subconscious mind in a way that allows your mind to work in conjunction with the infinite spirit or God to deliver the blessings that you've been praying for. It's pretty much the same concept that Napoleon Hill called auto-suggestion in another book called Think and Grow Rich. If done righteously, your greatest desires will be granted to you by divine right under grace in perfect ways. In this episode, I'll summarize the 10 chapters of the book and offer some additional perspective that can help you achieve your goals. Hopefully, I can inspire you to reconsider how you manifest abundance. Let's get into it. Chapter 1. The Game The majority of people view life as a struggle where they're almost powerless, with everything in the infinite spirit's hands. But if you're a true extension of the infinite spirit, wouldn't some of that divine power be instilled in you? Life is really a game with a controller and cheat codes just like you're playing GTA on your Xbox. You have more jurisdiction than you think. Whatever energy a man sends out, whether through speech, the work he does, or the thoughts he entertains, will return to him. That's the true meaning of reaping what you sow, or what we typically consider karma. This is why it's important to speak with an optimistic tone, do purposeful work with integrity, and do our best to entertain ethical thoughts that stimulate virtuous images in the mind. The more you live by the code I just mentioned, the more likely you are to be aligned with good health, wealth, love, genuine companions, limitless talent, and anything else correlated with good good fortune. The mind is made up of the subconscious, conscience, and the superconscious. The subconscious portion of the mind needs to be reprogrammed because it's been tainted by the things we've seen in society, the entertainment that Western media pushes, the false ideologies that our parents may have convinced us are true, and the negative self-talk we've grown accustomed to. Our subconscious is like a toddler. If you program it to do good, it will follow suit. If you train it to do bad, it will do so. It has no sense of humor. So even if you're joking, it's going to listen to you. Oftentimes, we ignorantly joke ourselves and others into misfortune. Every man has an equal opportunity to flourish in this world. It all depends on how well you compare conscious thoughts with conscious actions. Quote, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. End quote. And that's from Matt, um, 7-7. Insecure feelings of fear or doubt that seep into the subconscious mind is the only factor that can put a wedge between a man and his desires. When you master the ability to optimistically speak things into existence without worrying, what you want will come to fruition. If you want prosperity, your main objective has to become conquering the mind by embracing all your good thoughts and disregarding all the evil ones. Chapter 2, The Law of Prosperity Words are vibrations that get sent out like a radio frequency to the infinite spirit. 
A key part of prayer is to speak your desires into existence with a firm belief. There's two ways to influence your subconscious to develop a stronger belief in what you're manifesting. Number one, continuously give thanks for already receiving what you've asked for. And number two, continuously visualize what it would be like to receive it by using a vision board. I went more in depth on vision boards in another post that went up recently about smart goals. A creative way to use both these tips is to create a private Instagram account just for manifestation. Post images that align with the changes you want to see in your life and give thanks in your captions. Picture this image in your mind. It's a three by three grid with nine photos that symbolize wealth. You have a money counter rapidly counting blue hundreds. You have bars of gold and silver. There's a trading chart. Money folded over people's heads to signify they're covered by life insurance. A credit report with a score that reached six, actually 760. Triple eight, a screenshot of an investment account that has over a million dollars in funds. Some real estate property and a quote that says, the universe supplies me with an endless amount of wealth. The caption for an image like this might say, I give thanks for the financial stability and the opportunity to create generational wealth, which has been granted to me by divine right under grace in perfect ways. Chapter three and chapter four, the power of the word or willpower and the law of non-resistance. In these chapters, you'll learn about the law of non-resistance. Shin explains that a man's willpower is his secret weapon. Courage and composure produce a magical protective energy. Quote, the invisible forces are ever working for a man who is always pulling the strings himself, though he does not know it. Owing to the vibratory power of words, whatever man voices, he begins to attract. People who continually speak of disease invariably attract it. End quote. Fear attracts the exact occurrences that you've been running away from. Fearlessness prevents them from taking place. Any disturbance you experience in your life is a direct result of the misalignment between your mind, body, and soul. You can easily become your own worst enemy if you don't monitor yourself. Speaking of enemies, everyone has some sort of adversary at some point, whether you provoke them directly or indirectly. But you have to love them from a distance too. Bless them and wish them well for your own karma. Quote, Goodwill produces a great order of protection about the one who sends it, and no weapon that is formed against him shall prosper. In other words, love and goodwill destroy the enemies with oneself. Therefore, one has no enemies on the external. End quote. I want to highlight that this doesn't mean you need to engage with your enemies. We know how dangerous that can be. You just don't want to harbor that negative energy and carry that with you everywhere you go. Shin declares that living in the past and keeping yourself bonded to traumatic or frustrating occurrences is a sure way to block your blessings. And stressing about your future can affect you in the same way. You should learn to appreciate the past and focus on the lessons from it that help to guide your choices today. Emotionally and spiritually detach yourself from the past so it doesn't keep you in a mental prison. At the same time, embrace the future. Recognize that it holds infinite abundance for you, but be totally present in the here and now. Here are some affirmations for staying in the present moment. I am at the best possible place in this moment. I take life one moment at a time. At this moment, I have everything that I need. I let go of everything that is outside of my control. I'm fully in the now. I choose peace rather than stress. Chapter 5, The Law of Karma and the Law of Forgiveness The game of life is a game of reciprocation. Like I mentioned earlier, the energy you put out will come back to you with staggering accuracy. Karma is a Sanskrit term that means comeback. If you wish to gain riches, then you must be rich in spirit. Rich in consciousness, display a form of love that feels rich, and feed the body with foods that are rich in nutrients. If you don't want misfortune to come back to you, be cautious in how you project your energy and be intentional about the lifestyle you're subscribing to. 
to help you right your wrongs and neutralize your karma, you can ask the infinite spirit for forgiveness or directly seek forgiveness from the people you've wronged. Blessed, quote, blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered, end quote. Psalms 32, 1. Chapter 6, Casting the Burden, Impressing the Subconscious. Freeing yourself from emotional burden is needed to activate the divine force within you that attracts your desires. Once you lift this weight off your shoulders, it's easier to clear your conscience, have faith, and have confidence. Remember, you can't control everything. Whatever you don't have dominion over, the infinite spirit does. Redirect the energy holding you back by affirming, I cast this burden onto the Christ within and go free. Music is a powerful tool that can help ease emotional burden. The fourth dimensional nature of music frees the spirit from confinement. It gives the impression that great things are achievable and simple to execute. However, not all music is healthy for the subconscious, as I'm sure you know. Try to stick with high vibrational tunes or frequency tones that have healing properties. Chapter 7, Love Love is the fifth element and one of the most powerful components of the manifestation process. It's the most magnetic force in the universe. The fourth dimension is accessible to man thanks to the cosmic phenomena, ph phenomena of love. True love is fearless and selfless. There's more focus on giving rather than receiving. Ironically, the more you give, the more you get. If you yearn for a love that's pure, you must love people with pure intentions. Quote, no man is your enemy. No man is your friend. Every man is your teacher. End quote. If you salute the divinity in everyone, from people to animals, you're likely to go unharmed. Furthermore, man must also love the work he does. That's the only way to produce favorable results. And one must learn to love money too, but not worship it. People who proclaim money means nothing to them and scorn people who have it are oftentimes the people who can't attract it. They stay in poverty because of their poverty mindset. Chapter 8, Intuition or Guidance The man who realizes the power of his word and follows his intuition becomes an undeniable force to be reckoned with. To strengthen your intuition, you have to dedicate more time to self-reflection, spend more time in solitude, develop the courage to live in your truth, even if that means being disliked, and gain the skill to analyze events in real time. The universe is your unlimited supply of resources. And that supply is only limited by limited imagination or limited faith. Sometimes a man can receive an intuitive idea that has the potential to create tremendous wealth and he won't act on it because he lacks faith in his own intuition. This ultimately keeps his life stagnant. Chapter 9. Perfect Self-Expression or the Divine Design Every man has his own unique individuality and destiny. As much as you might fear so, there is no man that can take your place by doing what you do the way you do it. This is the divine design. You just have to see your own greatness and love your talents before it's recognized. And you have to be open-minded and accept the fact that what you assume is your path initially may not always be the path ordained for you. Before I dev devoted myself to content marketing, I was sure I was going to develop a successful career in civil engineering. But the infinite spirit led me in a different direction that I didn't resist. Quote, infinite spirit, open the way for the divine design for my life to manifest. Let the genius within me now be released. Let me see clearly the perfect plan. End quote. You don't want to become a wicked and slothful servant as a result of doing work that's not fulfilling to you. Overcome the fear and anxiety of being judged. Set aside the ideologies that might have been forced onto you and step into the lane that's most empowering to you. When you follow your destiny, you find your salvation. Chapter 10, Denials and Affirmations. Most men expect less of themselves, so they ask for less from the universe too. Most men have a fear of loss, so they don't take risks to gain. But if man registered in his mind that the abundance he seeks is already waiting for him, 
all the good that is meant to manifest in his life would reveal itself faster. The malicious use of speech against yourself or others is sure to bring failure and misfortune. Wealth is a state of mind. In a world where there is so much treachery and imbalance, it's a blessing to wake up, operate with a balanced mind, and contribute to the positive paradigm shifts. That is heaven on earth. Affirmations are powerful because they enable you to transform your negative beliefs into positive thinking patterns, which gives you the access to a stronger belief system that you need in order to live in this way. What the infinite spirit can provide is immeasurable to man. You don't need to think rationally about it. Just be fearless, be, be non-resistant, and lead with love. The gates of heaven are awaiting your arrival. Was this episode compelling for you? Learn anything worth deep consideration? I would greatly appreciate it if you could leave some feedback by emailing me at balance, balanceofalion at gmail.com and share this post with your peers too. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube and our podcast on Anchor FM or Spotify and we'll be on Apple Podcasts soon. Care to make a donation to help us expand? Cash up us at dollar sign balance of a line. Thanks for listening. Peace.